All right, I think I'm gonna continue with the firewall. And we got some sealant in that uh, basically take that off, kind of left that off because we wanted to seal it with something. And we also got some insulation in I'm gonna play with. I don't know if we'll use it, but uh, yeah, that will be next on the agenda. So the sealant that we opted for was the 3M Fire Barrier 2000 Plus Fire Stop. It's kind of designed for construction stuff and you don't have a whole bunch of information if you can glue it to aluminum, if it's uh, fuel proof or solvent proof or any of that stuff. So <clears throat> Curious George always likes to do his own tests. Um, the dark stuff is actually Pro Seal from before. And then this stuff, I just put it on this morning, but it seems to solidify pretty fast. It seems to hold the aluminum pretty good, much better than the, I don't know, some other stuff that I bought, um, the homeowner's grade. Then I put some on here and I actually wrote an email to the company asking if it's, you know, fuel proof once cured. And because it's Saturday and I'm impatient, I actually did my own test. So this morning, I took some 100, <laughs> 100 low lead and I purposely put like a semi cured piece in like the outside stick, but you, you can you can tell like the inside's not cured yet. And this is what happened. This is interesting. So this has been sitting in here for uh, 12 hours or so. And the inside dissolved. You can see the 100 the, the fuel is a little milky, but the outside seems to be solid. So I think that answers my question about it being uh, solvent proof. I assume most silicones are, but I'm not a chemist and I have no idea, but this makes me feel better about using it on the firewall. We know it's good for high temperatures. Now we have the uh, fuel thing uh, in case of fuel leaks or oil leaks or all that other stuff. Um, again, this is totally non-scientific. This is just me doing experiments and if somebody else finds it helpful, that's great, but it also acts as a good I don't want to pull it apart yet. I'm going to pull it apart tomorrow when it's been like 24 hours. But uh, it seems quite quite solid for just gluing silicone. I mean, sorry, gluing aluminum. Check out these cool chocks that I made. Um, I used to have like two by fours in here so it wouldn't roll, especially when the tail was up on a chair or something. And I kept kicking them out. So <laughs> I made these out of three quarter inch PVC. I just cut them out on a router with a quick template. One and a half inches thick. I did not round over the edges even though it would look better, but I figured it would keep it from uh, sliding. I believe this was like nine and a quarter times five or six and a half. Um, I kind of forgot about them. They, they slide in there and they're pretty low profile, so you don't tend to kick them as you walk by. Um, we've kept the plane nice and safe. I thought they were cool. Okay, enough distractions. Time to get serious with the boot call. Uh, here's the plan. I taped off where the joints are Oops. on both sides. I'm gonna disassemble it, scuff this, and put the, the 3M stuff on it, I think, to make a seal, then rivet it. Hopefully it won't be too messy. And then I think eventually just cover the top of it you know, so it's like a seam of steel because my thinking is obviously the rivet, each rivet has a hole in it where the mandrel is that fumes and fuel can get through there. So you kind of want to seal that as well. Uh, that's the plan. Let's see how it goes.
You know, to have it all masked off, sanded it, scuff pad, and I cleaned it. And I'm glad I read the instructions because usually I clean everything with rubbing alcohol, but uh, it actually says first thing not to use alcohol, use mineral spirits. So I did. And now the plan is just to put a thin layer on this where it overlaps, get the rivets in, they get that sealed, and then you can always put a thick layer over the rest of it. And hopefully I just won't make too much of a mess. No guarantees. And because I get easily confused when you're in the middle of putting something together, uh, the rivets go from the outside in. So the ugly side of the rivets actually on the inside of the firewall. So I just want to make sure I get that right. And then you got to put these washers on too. So this is going to be fun. Probably a two man job. <laughs> All right, I'm not gonna torture you with the second half, but it came out really nice. I uh, think I'm gonna keep this side clean, because it's still clean. And let me spin it around so you can see it on the light. And then here, you know, I just ran a little bead, ran my finger over it, so that'll seal that. Once we do it to the uh, rest of the skin, we'll fillet that in. And then, The other side you see some you know penetration where it's oozing out so I'm happy with that that means you got good coverage and I think here well I'll probably the whole thing this would have been a lot easier if you didn't have to use these brass washers I'm not sure why I don't even know if I was supposed to wet rivet these things but uh, yeah the instructions basically just narrow it down to this one little picture here that's actually indicating what you're supposed to do there with this big confusing diagram. Look at all those shiny brass rivets. Elvis Presley would be jealous. All right, so here's what I did. I uh, basically took the that same compound, the fire stuff, and just gooed it over the rivets. Is it a good idea? I don't know, but it makes sense to me. Hopefully once I peel the tape off, it'll look decent. Success. Got the tape off. And I just put a little wood on there because it wants to kind of buckle if it's not there. And I don't know if I mentioned it before, but the idea is basically to seal the holes inside the rivets. So the stuff dries pretty quick. So it's not like silicone around your sink where you can kind of play with it for a while. Well, I guess it took me a lot longer to do this than it would have sank. So it, uh, it dries up pretty quick. And uh, yep, midnight again, been a long day today. Tomorrow I might undercoat the inside. Not sure if it's gonna stick to that, but um, yeah, actually I'm happy how far I got. I didn't think I was gonna get this far, so gotta think of what to do next. Good night. Well, here I am again procrastinating, going to bed. It's after midnight, and I decided that since the tube stuff is probably gonna dry up before I get to use it, I had always toyed with the idea. I've never heard anybody do it or talk about it, or maybe there's a reason that people aren't, um, but I put it underneath between the floorboards and any of the supports. And let me tell you, it made a world of difference. Now in my car audio field, we do a lot of sound deadening. Um, and I know these, these stiffeners made a difference, but 
I mean, yeah, this is actually resonating off of the back, but as soon as you get up here, where I put just a little bit of that silicone adhesive on, uh, you know, wherever like the tubes touch or come close to the, the, the sheet metal, um, yeah, I fill it in, you know, like in here, along the side brace, because that was kind of rattly. And uh, it hasn't even cured yet, so I'm really excited. Hopefully it'll look good tomorrow. All right, one more time. Good night tomorrow, actually today. Later on today, early on. Good night.